still dancing. We're starving. Welcome back, everybody. We are celebrating the first day of Hispanic Heritage Month. This is an empanada feast. We've got Hispanic cultures. Every Hispanic culture has its own version of this dish. We have four chefs here to show us three different ones, starting right here with Ileana Maisonet making empanadas from Puerto Rico. So excited to have you here. Veronica and Linda Garza with empanadas from Mexico and Mariana Velasquez with the Colombian version. Ladies, I am so ready to eat. So, hey, Colombia. Okay, you're, there's gonna be a lot of like flag waving out here this morning. Um, I wanna start with you, Eliana. Your, co your cookbook is coming out uh, Diaspora Rican next month. Yes. I learned this in Puerto Rico. You guys don't call them empanadas. No. Tell me what you call them and you use ground beef. We do. So I'm using ground bison, but you can use ground beef. We call them empanadillas or pastelillos. So today we're going to make pastelillos. Pastelillos. And I'll tell okay. you the difference between the two. Walk me through what you're going to do here. You're starting, you make your own dough. So I make my own dough, but these ones are pre-made. It's a shortcut. You're it's saving the easier us. way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And these can be bought at like any Latin supermarket. Uh -huh. And in my pan, I already have the uh, yeah. potatoes and the onions going. Okay. So what I'll have you do because these are already soft. I'm ready. This is ground bison. This is what okay. I like to use. You can ground bison. Now you prefer bison over beef I on this one. I do. Huh? Okay. Just because it's a lot leaner. Okay. Mixing it in? Yep, mixing it in. Some in. Spices? So what I want you to do is drop in a little bit of this sazon. So sazon is like a combination. Everybody has their different recipe, yeah. right? This one has cumin, onions, garlic. Okay. So a little bit of this chopped uh, olive. olive. Okay. And the sazon can be bought pre-made already. I like you have a little bit of a little bit of mix. It right. make it a little easier sometimes. Exactly. It doesn't always have to be the way I well I would do it. A little bit <laughs> of chopped uh, capers. Oh, capers. Okay. So if you don't like olives and capers, like if you don't not into it, like a textural thing, you can jump in like just the olive brine, okay. which is what I do. Sometimes. You want a little bit, a little, little bit of taste there. You little, need that kind of acidity. Uh -huh. yeah. So I want you to do a little bit of the tomato sauce. Okay. I'm gonna jump some of these in a little faster here. Some salt, pepper? Just a teeny bit of salt. Okay, you don't really need that much salt because the sauce okay. already has salt. All right, what are you doing here with this? It doesn't have salt in it. A little bit of tomato sauce. We're coming down to you guys bit. next. Get ready, get ready. Okay. All right, all right. Mix it, mix it, mix it. A little bit of a sofrito. A so sofrito. sofrito just has cilantro, onions, garlic, tomatoes, yeah. recal. Gotta have sofrito. Mix it, mix it, mix, mix it. Mix away. Mix it. All right, we're gonna come back and try these. Gio? Oh, that smells so good. We've also got Linda and Veronica Garza here from Siete Foods. And check this out, this book. This is the cookbook, The Siete Table. It is out next month. We're going to be talking about ample apple empanadas, empanadas de manzana, let's say it in Spanish, yes. right? And they're grain-free. They're grain-free. So what do you use for the dough? Yeah, so they're grain-free, gluten-free, and vegan because we like to be inclusive of multiple uh, dietary preferences. So these actually have almond, tapioca, and cassava flour. Um, and um, they're actually, we use that same dough from multiple recipes throughout this cookbook. And you actually have to use this, right? What is this? Yeah. So we start with dough rounds, and to press them out, we can use either a tortilla press or a rolling pin if you don't have one of these. So you just take the dough round and place it between Did uh, you some just parchment. ask what a tortilla press is? No, yeah. no, no, no. Let's, 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 let's explain it to the audience. Why are you calling me out? Why are you calling me out? All right. Let's use a rolling pin. You know, anyway. You can use a rolling pin. Yeah, so what's the filling like? We are so, using honey crisp apples, uh -huh. maple syrup, Ooh, cinnamon, okay. like cinnamon, use maple syrup, cinnamon, nutmeg, salt, and one whole clove. And we're just going to mix these around for about 15 minutes, five minutes on medium, and then 10 minutes on medium low. We're just going to let them simmer. And mm. this is a super special recipe to us because it's actually our mom's favorite, and it exemplifies oh, our how hyphenated. Special. Yeah, it, it yeah. exemplifies our hyphenated Mexican American culture, and it's very reminiscent of growing up on the border in Laredo, Texas. Mm. Oh my God, that is so good, so delicious. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The Balsa family, Ginger. Thank you, Gio. <laughs> so he's got to toss it over here. Mariana Velasquez with us, the author of Colombiana. The cookbook mm -hmm. and also our pantry, a line of sauces that we are going to be utilizing a little bit here. You're making us a spicy chicken empanada. Indeed. And it's a it's a smaller one. It's a smaller one. A little party bite. Exactly. It's the perfect aperitivo. And I always keep them frozen so that when people show up unexpected, I pop them in the oven and they're ready to go. And they're like, look at you. So the chicken is so finely shredded. Is this something where I can like cut the corner and use a rotisserie? Absolutely. I love using rotisserie chicken, especially choosing one that it's 
very juicy. Okay. And then we're gonna season it with some turmeric, some coriander, uh -huh. some cumin. Great. Oh, that's gonna have. And then I'm gonna spice. add some ogao, which is the backbone of Colombian cooking. Oh Essentially, it's this sauce that has tomatoes, yeah. onions, spices, and is the base for all of our cuisine. And it's the sauce that I developed for our pantry. A and little salt really and pepper, yummy. right? Yeah, salt and pepper. Give it both. Is this meant to go in there? But after. So oh, once okay. this cools off, you wow. fold in the sour cream and the cilantro, uh -huh. and you and get you this go. mixture. And so we'll do that quickly. Is there a proper way, once we get these cut, that you're supposed to eat an empanada? Yes. So you take a bite. Okay. You squeeze a little bit of lime in it. Oh, uh -huh. So take first a bite, uh -huh. then a little bit of lime uh -huh. to fill the filling with that mm. citrus deliciousness. Yes. And then take a second bite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a big lime fan, so that is good. So good. Once you fill it, you're putting a little fork mark. Exactly. So the key is to not overfill it too much because otherwise the filling will ooze out. Yeah. And then egg wash it and how long? About 15 to 20 minutes at okay. 400. All right. Yeah. If you want these recipes, because I know you do, you just scan that QR code right there on the screen. Thank you to all the chefs. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.